So first up, uh, hi everybody. For those that don't know me, uh, my name is Mike McGrath, and I had uh, I joined Fedora, and I think it was around 2005. Um, I was working for a company. I was working for Orbits.com, the the travel company. And so uh, I think even before that, I had been at uh, a study abroad company, uh, which means that we uh, we would send American students to other countries. Uh, to hang out with other American students. I think that was the, the mission of the uh, of the company. Uh, but then I uh, uh, I really got serious when I was at uh, at Orbitz and I started volunteering in Fedora infrastructure. Uh, at the time there were no there were not that many people that were paid full time to work in Fedora. And so I have many, many stories from from the early days, uh, but I'll share a quick one uh, which was my hiring. And so uh, sometime around Fedora Core 3 or 4, the, the, the Fedora release landed on the same day that the quarterly or that the Red Hat quarterly financials were due. And, and so uh, we uh, back then, for the youngins out there, uh, we, uh, we got slash dotted. That was the thing. I don't think people say that anymore. But uh, the systems were overwhelmed. People couldn't actually download the, uh, uh, couldn't get to the website, but also internally because the Fedora stuff was not completely separated from the internal IT stuff. Uh, the, the people could not get uh, their financials. Uh, the, the finance team couldn't. And so basically the CFO kind of said, this can never happen again. And at the time, Max Spivak was the uh, the Fedora pro or no, he was the uh, Fedora project lead, and uh, they went to him and said, "Hey, we got to work on this." And he said, "Well, you got to invite uh, Mike McGrath." At the time, I was volunteering as the Fedora infrastructure lead. <clears throat> Most of uh, the team at that point was actually volunteers. A lot of the uh, internal people that a lot of the red hatters that were working on Fedora. Uh, either got uh, moved on to other things or uh, were in specific situations like uh, like a release engineer kind of thing. And uh, so Max said, invite Mike McGrath. Uh, the CFO's uh, assistant could not find my name in the directory. And that's because I did not work at Red Hat. I was a volunteer. And uh, she said, you want us to invite a volunteer to talk about how we're going to close financial, you know, our, our quarterly company financials on infrastructure. Uh, needless to say, I was not invited, but that the outcome of that meeting was to hire somebody full time to do this, uh, and they they hired me. And so I started formally in 2007. I uh, did that for several more years, and the team grew. And uh, I I still look very fondly back at my time on Fedora. Uh, but uh, also around after that, I switched to, uh, to uh, at then it was called Project uh, Libra. I was the first one on it uh, and uh, basically a founding member of OpenShift. And so I went and was the arc lead architect for OpenShift and the OpenShift uh, online operations manager. And then right around the time OpenShift V3 hit, I went back to Linux engineering uh, as an architect and manager and did, did a few things. And now uh, slowly working my way up through the ranks, I guess uh, I'm the vice president of Linux engineering. And so uh, in my current role, I oversee all of our Linux uh, uh, distributions. So that includes Fedora, it includes uh, RHEL, it includes our CentOSes, uh, uh, CoreOS. Um, the silver blue stuff is all kind of, you know, happening over on the desktop team and, and in other places. And all that stuff is in my org. But I also have a few other things like... Uh, We've got satellites, uh, we've got identity management, uh, quite a few things are happening in, in the Linux space. So it's a great team, very, uh, uh, very excited to, to work on that team and uh, lots of stories. Uh, so if you ever catch me at a dinner, feel free to ask. I've got plenty, plenty to share. So next, I just kind of wanted to talk about just my, this is my take on how mentorship goes. I think that today you'll probably hear lots of different opinions on, on this and experiences. Uh, and when I look at uh, what a mentor is, uh, to me, the mentor is always an advisor and a coach uh, who shares their experiences with someone who is less experienced. It would be very strange for me to be mentored by someone uh, like, an, you know, someone more junior than me, an associate uh, software engineer, for example. Maybe it happens, but uh, that is not typically how I uh, think of mentorship. And uh, in my time uh, uh, working at Red Hat, I have been both mentored several times and I have mentored several times. 
uh, in just about every type of scenario that you can imagine. And so I'm going to cover kind of all of those today and what my experiences were. And I'm hoping to kind of share just some actual facts that I went out and got about mentorship uh, to convince those of you that have not had a mentor before um, to, to get one. So uh, mentorship is common. A lot of people have mentors. Uh, there are people that I know that have multiple mentors right now. Um, and some, and many are mentoring multiple people. I'm personally mentoring several, a few people right now. And so it's always good to make time, you know, as a mentor, I make sure I have enough time for them. I can't just take on everybody uh, all the time. And so I have to turn some away, uh, but now I'm mentoring a few people and uh, those relationships are, are great. So, uh, of the fortune 500 companies, 71% of them have actual mentorship programs. And so, uh, at your company, you may want to just check and see if they have a mentorship program. Uh, they tend to be more limited uh, uh, time set kind of uh, uh, programs. So you may just be mentored or mentor someone for six months. Those have their benefits. Uh, although some people, as we'll see, have had mentorship for years or even throughout their lifetime. And uh, we'll talk about that as well. Uh, Fedora's uh, mentorship program, uh, as I recall, was built at the, you know, when I first started getting involved, this was built around the account system. Uh, people would specifically sponsor others. Um, and certain, while I have not uh, attempted to package anything in Fedora recently, uh, the, uh, package, the, the package sponsorship uh, setup was a perfect example of technical mentorship to help uh, show people around Fedora, uh, let them know what's important and how to, uh, to work on uh, uh, packages and all of that that was required. That is a perfect example of mentorship uh, with a very clear goal in mind uh, for both the mentor and the mentee. Ninety-seven percent of people that uh, that have worked with a mentor say they are valuable, and so you know when was the last time that you found ninety-seven percent of people agreed on anything at all? Um, I think uh, it's a very strong argument that that mentorship works, and uh, uh, so for those of you that are naysayers, say, "Oh, I can't really get anything out of it." I'm going to speak to that a little bit, but if you don't think mentorship's for you, I will say that is probably uh, something that you need to work through and not something about mentorship itself. Uh, and of course, another big one is men, uh, mentees, those who have been mentored, are promoted five times more often than those without mentors. And so if you're, if you're in a situation right now where you're very career minded and you're looking for growth, uh, get a mentor, uh, someone that is more senior than you and that can uh, help you uh, either you know figure out what's what's not working right now or help you figure out some goals and things uh, to line that up. Uh, wanting to be promoted, for example, trying to get to that next level, that is a perfect thing to discuss with your mentor. And so just keeping in mind when you, uh, uh, and we'll, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about this too, but there's lots of different reasons to get into mentorship. Um, and it's always important to kind of think about what your reasons are. So, uh, I've mentioned this earlier. I've been involved in many different types of mentorship in my career. Uh, the first one I talked about was packaging mentorship. Uh, I believe my first uh, packaging sponsor was Ignacio. Uh, many, 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 this would have been, what, 15 years ago, something like that. Uh, and it was actually just getting packages contributed. And so I had, uh, uh, that was kind of my first foray into Fedora was at the packaging level. But I also quickly got involved with uh, Fedora infrastructure. And that was really where I found my home. Uh, in the Fedora project. Uh, I had a few mentors in the early days. Uh, Elliot Lee was one I was up with, if, if for those that uh, can go back that far, they remember that. Uh, the late Seth Vidal was, uh, was hugely influential uh, to my time in, in both Fedora, but also how to get involved with uh, open source in general. I had not really contributed to too many uh, open source projects at the time. The only one that I could even say I was even tiny bit involved with was Myth TV at the time. Uh, and I had no code contributions. I think I just uh, used it and occasionally uh, you know, participated on the mailing list. And so having Seth kind of walk me around uh, and introduce me to uh, open source in general was huge. And of course, Max Spivak, who became my manager at, uh, at Red Hat when I uh, first started here, uh, was also big in, in just kind of helping me through and, and learn the ropes. Uh, when I was working uh, in uh, uh, at Red Hat, like once I actually formally got started at Red Hat, I, you know, I met several people and that was great. 
Uh, but also around the time that OpenShift was was happening, that was such a huge turning point in my life and in my career. Uh, and so uh, uh, one of the things that had happened uh, was basically uh, I had gone back to college around that time to get a, 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 a master's degree in engineering management. So I guess for those of you that are interested, I highly recommend the engineering management uh, degree. I actually did not. Uh, I'm not particularly academic. Um, I, did, I don't think I benefited a ton from my bachelor's degree uh, in computer science uh, or right, telecommunications management, actually, just because I was such a tinkerer. So much of that stuff just wasn't new to me. Uh, but uh, engineering management was actually a great way for me to, to kind of learn a few more things. Didn't so much have a mentor there uh, as learned about leadership and management. And that was kind of where I learned a lot of the mechanics of how I would become a mentor later. And shortly after uh, inventing OpenShift, that became a huge, big thing, uh, at least at Red Hat. Uh, I was selected to participate in what's called the Accelerated Leadership Development Program at Red Hat, uh, or ALDP. And part of that program uh, gave me access to both a coach and a mentor. Uh, and that was actually a great experience for me, but also uh, changed the way I look at uh, relationships just in general uh, in the office. And so uh, I had a coach. Uh, the one thing about, and you may be wondering, well, what's the difference between a coach and a mentor uh, if, if they're formally using that title? In my case, a coach didn't. A coach never answered a single one of my questions with anything other than a question. Um, they were actually a great sounding board to kind of figure out what I wanted, uh, but they really. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, I didn't really get to know my coach that well. I mean, you know, I got to know him kind of on a personal level. But uh, for the most part, they were just someone to talk to and bounce ideas off of uh, during that time. This was like a roughly one year program. Uh, and so the coach was actually great. I, it was nice to have somebody to talk to. Um, but the mentor in that case was even better. Uh, and in my case, uh, they were having trouble finding new mentors inside Red Hat. And so they started to look for people outside Red Hat. I happened to get matched with somebody in the finance industry. And this was very interesting. He was a business guy. He was not a technologist in any way. And the funniest thing for me was he also happened to be unemployed at the time. He, <laughs> he, uh, they, they had matched me with someone who had was in the in the process of changing careers and was taking a couple months off. And so I, I like to joke that I thought the mentorship uh, experience with uh, with him went very well uh, because before uh, he started mentoring me, he did not have a job, but after he was done, he did have a job. And so I think that uh, I was a successful mentee for him. Uh, but the, the, there was a couple of things that were really key, uh, which he didn't, uh, the thing that was nice about it is he didn't know any of the people at Red Hat. He didn't know uh, who I was talking to or why. And that caused uh, him to ask questions that I wouldn't normally get asked. And also helped me learn things like, you know, he, he would just ask me questions um, you know, like he, if I was having a problem or trying to figure out how to get some process through a Red Hat, um, he would ask me, you know, just kind of pointedly ask, are other people listening to this guy or is everybody ignoring him? Uh, and the reason he, that's important, that was important to figure out because that changes how I would, uh, you know, how I'd approach a problem. Are we, uh, you know, one versus the world here trying to do what we think is right? Or was this just kind of a, was this a long shot thing that we were going to try to do? And so it was really, it was just really refreshing to be able to talk very plainly and bluntly about things that were going on at work. Uh, this was the first mentor I had that was very career focused with me. So I went from having, I would say, technical mentors in the past uh, to having one that was more focused on career because that was the specific goal that I had for myself um, in that leadership program. And so I'll talk about goals in a minute, but uh, you know, really understanding what you're looking to get out of your mentor will help you both pick who, what kind of mentor you should be looking for, uh, but also uh, what you want out of them. And of course, uh, for, for mentoring, uh, I, I've got uh, three mentees at the moment, uh, two from various mentorship programs at Red Hat, uh, and one of them who just reached out directly to me and asked for it. And they're at all levels of the company. Um, one of them is a, a senior director, uh, got a, uh, and the rest of them, I think one of them is an associate manager right now. Uh, and so the, right now I'm mentoring mostly uh, management uh, manager, people on the manager track, but certainly at all levels of their career. Uh, and uh, it's been very rewarding to, to help them through that. These are, uh, uh, you know, they have uh, troubles and successes and we talk through them and uh, I find it very rewarding to, to mentor now. 
So, um, you know, been a, a good mentorship engagement uh, has all of the following traits. So let's just say you're looking to get into a, a mentorship uh, uh, situation. Uh, what, what, what does a good engagement look like? What should you be looking for? Uh, one of them is trust. You need to be able to be completely open with each other and even explicitly setting those boundaries at the start of the relationship that uh, you're creating a safe space that shouldn't be discussed outside of that uh, that space um, uh, is good. It means that you can be very frank and, and plain with your your mentor and uh, hopefully be free of judgment. You know, certainly, um, you know, if you, I don't know, punched a fellow employee, you're probably going to get a little bit of judgment out of that. But if you're simply lost and not sure what to do, like making sure that uh, you have someone safe to go talk to is, is important there. Uh, also making sure you have clearly understood goals. Uh, this is something that uh, I've realized both as a mentee and a mentor. Um, in the case of my packaging sponsorship, I knew exactly what I wanted. I wanted to become a packager. I had some specific packages in mind. I wanted to learn how to use the packaging guidelines as the tome. And so, you know, uh, Ignacio helped me on that on that path. Um, with uh, with my LDP program, I was career focused, and so I wanted to. I was very focused on making sure I made better connections within the company, um, outside of engineering people I didn't know that well, and also. And this was interesting for you remotees, for those of you that are working remotely. Um, we also decided to just work on my internal brand, and I. I, it still feels funny to say that your internal brand, but it was about making sure that uh, making sure that I knew what I was to be known for. So that way, if I wasn't in a meeting in in Boston or in Raleigh or any other of the major hubs that Reddit has, that people would remember and think of me. I'd say we need to go to Mike with this instead of trying to handle it on their own. Uh, and so, you know, these were specific goals that I had. But I've also been in mentorship situations where no specific goals happen. And we just kind of met and talked about what had been going on that week and maybe some specific problems. Uh, but without goals, there's no direction on where that relationship should go. Uh, and uh, those engagements have been less successful, I think. Uh, they're just less impactful for both the mentor and the mentee. Uh, flexibility is also very important. Uh, you know, mentees are on their own journey and they're going to make their own decisions as they should. Um, you should never go into a mentorship situation thinking that you're going to help, uh, you're going to teach that person what decisions they should be making because uh, they're always going to be on a different path than you. And so having the flexibility to know what they're doing, uh, how you can help them is important, but also that flexibility is going to be required in case you happen to be mentoring someone that is completely outside of your scope of expertise, uh, which, uh, you know, is, uh, uh, I, I have found, uh, mentoring and menteeing with uh, people outside of, of my engineering scope uh, has been very helpful. It's a very different perspective on things and uh, really makes me think. And then of course, uh, uh, part of that is something that's mutually beneficial for both the mentor and the mentee. I think it's obvious that the mentee will, uh, will benefit from a, a mentorship uh, involvement, but uh, the uh, the mentor often does too. This allows me to get uh, at Redhead at least. I've gotten better insights into different teams uh, that I would normally interact with, uh, and I've gotten to learn about uh, other products and even other lines of business that I have no typical interaction with. Uh, but you know, it's made me uh, smarter and 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 uh, given me a better understanding of how Red Hat works. And so uh, I think uh, that's also great. So uh, just uh, to throw a couple of quotes up here, one of these was from Bill Gates, uh, who uh, was mentored by, uh, uh, by the, uh, what's his name, the Oracle, uh, Warren Buffett. Uh, he said, I picked Warren, uh, Warren as somebody that I have learned an immense amount from, just hearing his stories of how he dealt with tough situations and how he thought through long, how he thought long term, uh, how he models the world. If you get a chance to spend time with people like that, it's fantastic. And also one from Oprah Winfrey, uh, who was mentored by Maya Angelou throughout her life, as far as I can tell. Uh, she was always there for me, guiding me through some of the most important years of my life. Uh, mentors are important. And I don't think anybody makes it in the world without some form of mentorship. And so, uh, uh, you know, I think these are, you know, just people that I think, uh, th these are both examples of people I think have very long, multi-year, very long relationships with their mentors. Um, I haven't been in a situation like that, but I think if you're able to to find somebody like that, it's a it's a great situation to be in. 
Uh, and so I, I mentioned this a little bit, but my experience with mentoring others, um, the, the, the big things are regular contact. Um, if you, uh, I have found that about every other week works, maybe every week, but if you go to every month or less than that, it's just not going to work. And it really helps me as a mentor when the mentee is the one driving these things, making sure that they're the ones reaching out to set up meetings. Don't expect your mentor to do the, uh, uh, the grunt work there. Uh, trust and openness are a must and making sure that I know what their goals are, uh, are really the big, the big keys to success. Cause those are all the things that help me help them. And without that regular contact, uh, it's hard for me to know what's going on in their lives and things like that. And so, uh, just kind of my, uh, my, my little tip there. Um, and so here's what you should do. If you want to be, uh, to be a mentor, if you want to uh, be a mentee, uh, so make sure as, as mentee, uh, make sure you have a clear goal in mind. Your mentor can't help you if you don't know what you want. And I know that that can be a very big ask. I've certainly gone through several points in my career where I just didn't know what I wanted to do next. Those would actually have been fairly poor uh, situations to get a, a mentee, uh, sorry, to get a mentor. But if, if you're very clear about, well, I want to figure out, I, I'm, I feel lost and I want to find that next thing, that could be a goal. And so just as long as you're upfront about that, you could at least talk about it. But I've still found those those situations are not so great. Uh, it's much better to have a clear goal in mind uh, to talk to somebody. Also, make sure you find somebody that you respect. Um, you can ask them directly or if you don't know them, but you know somebody that does, one of your peers, ask for an introduction. Um, but don't just blindly reach out to someone and say, hey, will you be my mentor? And then not really have anything else in mind. It'd be great to say, hey, I, I love what you did with this project. Um, you know, I'm hoping to do something like that in my future. Would you mind mentoring? Just as long as you have some interactions with them, you wouldn't want to reach out to somebody famous or even like in your, uh, you know, someone way up in your company that you have no interactions with because, uh, you know, they just may, they may not go the way you think unless there's some, some prior connection there. And finally is to commit. Uh, if you find someone willing to mentor you, don't waste their time. Make sure you're the one setting up the meetings, doing the follow-ups, do the work. If your mentor gives you uh, a book to read or an article to read, make sure you read that before your next meeting. Uh, and, uh, you know, take uh, take their words seriously. And uh, that's uh, these are all things that have worked for me in the past, both on both sides of, uh, of the mentorship and menteeship. And uh, I'm hoping that they will will help you as well. Uh, and so with that, I'd like to thank you all. And if there's any questions, I don't know. I, I think I saw something in the q and I saw some things here. Oh, there are. There's, there's plenty of Q&A. So I'll just go through and, and read this. Um, I can't see the chat while I'm reading the Q&A unless uh, somebody wants to read the Q&A to me. I don't know if anybody else is in video here with me, but uh, I can just get to it. I can do that for you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So the first question is, have you found yourself growing in directions that are orthogonal to your mentorship goals? I that that are that are what to my mentorship goals that are orthogonal. Oh, um, sometimes I I think uh, no I I think I'll give you an example. I we at Red Hat right now, managed services are becoming a pretty big thing. And I'm on the rail side, so we've got a couple of managed services, but we're not like we don't have pagers on our on our hips. And so uh I think for me, uh, it's been valuable to kind of get back into that world. I was, you know, on call for I don't know, 15 years or something like that before I switch over to engineering. And uh as I as I meet with them, I found myself realizing how important it will be to teach my own team how to prepare things to be managed services. Um, I think that that's been, that's been nice, but yeah, I guess that's how, that's how I'll answer that one. Okay. Uh, another one, what is one pitfall you have seen for mentors and one pitfall for mentees advice on how to overcome or avoid those pitfalls? I, I think there, there's been a couple of them. Uh, every once in a while, if you're in a mentorship program, you will get matched with someone, you know, and if you have a pre-existing relationship with someone who was, used to be a peer or somebody you don't respect in that way, that can be awkward. So just be upfront about it and say, I don't think this one's going to work. Don't try to make it work. It gets, it gets a little weird. Uh, I think uh, the biggest pitfall I've seen from the mentee side is, uh, is, is not having a clear goal in mind. Um, uh, and and maybe, you know, I, I haven't seen too many problems or pitfalls on the mentorship side since most of what they're supposed to be doing is helping. 
Uh, but I could imagine a scenario where your mentor may disagree with your goals. Um, and you know, at that point, you may just want to find a different mentor, just as you would a doctor or somebody else that uh, you know, you're, you're going to for advice on something. Another question. How do you manage the transition from one mentor to another, either positive or negative or both? Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. One thing I like about mentorship programs, it, a good mentorship program, is they have a distinct beginning and end. And so if you both go in knowing that ahead of time, well, we're going to do this for six months or a year or 18 months or whatever, um, then at the end, you you have a, you have you start with a kickoff meeting. You say, hey, this is what we're going to do. And you have a closing meeting and you just you know let them know. You, you share with them some of the things that you've learned and, and just, you know, have a good, uh, a solid close. I almost always end with, you know, feel free to reach out in the future. If something comes up and you'd like to chat very quickly. Um, but yeah, at that point you, you know, you end, you end the relationship and then you, you would shut the, uh, uh, you delete any future calendar invites, things like that and go from there. Um, I have one of my mentorship uh, relationships right now is uh, is open-ended. And so we've been meeting for about a year now. There's not going to be a distinct end. I enjoy meeting. Uh, with him and uh you know we'll just see see how that goes in the future but at the moment that's one that doesn't have an end and i guess if it becomes a problem i'll just have to bring it up to him and say i don't have time anymore or something and you have to find another mentor but that's just kind of how, how we do it yeah uh here's one from your experiences have you ever found a need to discontinue a mentorship how do you think this should be handled in context of federal represent i have in in one and this is kind of goes i'll share a little bit more about the one i was referring to earlier uh, there was somebody that was working with me as a peer in uh, uh, in OpenShift in the very early days. We were both engineers, kind of lead engineers working on something. And we basically got blind matched in this uh, mentorship program. And so uh, at that point, both of our by that point, both of our careers had taken a very wide turn. Um, I'd gone into management and he uh, had done well at that. And he had been an in, uh, individual contributor. I was just trying to figure out that next thing. And while he had very clear goals, uh, we had already had a pre-established relationship. And so it was just a little awkward to get out of that. We ended up keeping the meetings, but mostly just to talk about what was going on in our respective orgs and things. It wasn't really a true mentorship relationship. And so we just kind of were upfront about that ahead of time. I said, hey, if this is weird, we can just do something else. Just kind of acknowledge it. And, and we moved on. Looking at the time, I'm just going, just going to ask one more question. What would be some books you would recommend, such as for mentees? Books for mentees. Uh, well, the, the, there's, I've got some back here. I think uh, I, I, it obviously depends on their goals. I am a big fan of uh, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, that is one I, I give to people, especially if they have, uh, you know, if they're in that, if they're in a scenario where they feel people aren't listening to them or, you know, they, they're so convinced of their convictions that they're right, but they've been unable to convince others. Um, that's a good one that I mentioned to people. Otherwise, it tends to be more uh, specific to what their goals are. Like if they, some people want to work on delegation better. And so I've got, you know, different goals for different, different books for different, uh, different people. But that's one. Another one I guess I, I've, I've given out a lot is good strategy, bad strategy, the difference and why it matters. Um, that has been a good one for people that are kind of mid-career that are looking to interact with people who are more late career. I think that's a really good one to uh, uh, to help take that leap and figure out what the language means uh, and and how to actually deal with strategy. So that's another one that I I, I uh, suggest a lot. Thanks a lot, and I think it's I need to visit some bookstore tomorrow morning to buy some books, <laughs> and I'll see you around. Thank you, everybody. I hope this was useful. <laughs>